here to offer their perspective to ask and answer some of those questions. Uh, let's continue the conversation with Stratton Pulitzer, Deputy Director of Equality Florida, and with Peter Sprigg, the Senior Fellow for Policy Studies of the Family Research Council. Again, gentlemen, we thank you both for uh, staying with us uh, to continue the discussion. Peter, as we know, uh, the Supreme Court doesn't issue votes on how they decide to take cases, but veteran court watchers seem to think that Chief Justice Roberts has been moving to the left, backing Obamacare, uh, among other decisions. So this decision not to decide, did it really come as a surprise to you? It did come as a surprise, and I think it came as a surprise uh, to almost everyone because you had uh, people on both sides of the issue were urging the court to take uh, to take one of these cases, and um, and so that's why it, uh, I think most people thought there there would be two options: either they would take one or more of the cases that were before them, or they would wait and simply not act upon any of these cases yet, uh, and um, and not. Uh, you know, not uh, accept or deny the writ of certiorari for these cases. The fact that they denied uh, the writ outright, um, I think, was was a surprise. Um, I, you know, it's sheer speculation what is going on within the court. Uh, I did um, talk with some of my colleagues about the possibility that um, uh, Chief Justice Roberts has, I know, uh, been uh, involved in trying to obtain greater consensus on the court and uh, so it's possible that this reflects an effort on his part to say look um, uh, let's postpone uh, our involvement let's have let's have a consensus on postponing uh, our involvement in this issue until a later date uh, because you'd have to have had at least one of the conservatives and at least one of the liberals decline to take this case uh, in order for to, these cases for them to be refused. Well, that, that's but an interesting speculation. That's an interesting take. And as you admit, it is speculation, Peter. But whatever the reason, perhaps it's an effort to achieve consensus on the court. But Stratton, uh, that means there's a lack of consensus in the states. Some appeal courts may uphold the bans while others will not. Uh, are you concerned about confusion in the courtrooms down the road? Well, I mean, the it's been perfectly clear that the legal community has consensus on this. What do we have, 40 rulings striking down these bans is unconstitutional now? And I think it just makes sense to average people that this cannot stand, this world in which a huge percentage of our, um, of our citizens in this country are married and then cross the state line and now are unmarried and the legal chaos that that's creating, it just can't stand. What we think is going to happen now is across this country, there are many of these cases where the decision has been stayed. And even though they've decided in our favor, they're not allowing people to get married. And, and the reason for that is um, that folks thought the Supreme Court was likely to take this up immediately and that we would have a 50 state solution very soon. Now that that's not happening, now that we have this timeline with no certain end, we think that many of those courts are going to begin lifting those stays and that some of the officials, like our Attorney General and Governor Rick Scott, who have also said they wanted to hear from the Supreme Court, they've heard now, and we think some we're going to see more of those folks abandoning these hopeless appeals the way some Attorney Generals and Governors across this country have already done. So uh, we, think, uh, we think we're going to actually see marriage legal in more places faster. Well, let me get to Peter's take on that and also ask Peter, heretofore, uh, marriage has largely been regulated by the states. Stepping back, is this an example of federal overreach? 30 seconds to answer that. Well, I definitely think it's an example of federal overreach. And while many people have said uh, that this is a response to the Windsor decision last year striking down part of the Federal Defense of Marriage Act, actually that decision was largely rooted in the power of states to define marriage, uh, uh, taking that power away from the federal government. Uh, and so to now have federal courts overturn state marriage definitions is inconsistent with Windsor. It's not, uh, it's not a logical follow-up have to leave it right there to Stratton Pulitzer and to Peter Sprigg. Gentlemen, we thank you and America's Forum continues.